Building an AI chatbot without a knowledge base is like driving a car without an engine. It just doesn't make sense. A knowledge base is what you give a chatbot in order to have specific knowledge about your business or about the project that you're building a chatbot for, which it otherwise wouldn't have. Let's say you're building a chatbot for an e-commerce business and you want the chatbot to know specific information about that shop, about the prices of specific products, about refund policies and more. If you don't add a knowledge base to your chatbot, Bot, it's simply going to use the general knowledge of whatever LLM you're using, such as OpenAI, and it will make up responses if it doesn't actually know the answer. Now, we obviously want to avoid this, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a knowledge base inside of VoiceFlow and use it inside of your chatbot. I'm going to walk you through all the options you have, as well as how you can integrate that knowledge into your specific chatbot workflows. Now, before we jump into it, please make sure to like and subscribe. So if you guys aren't familiar with VoiceFlow, I've made a ton of videos using VoiceFlow in the past. And VoiceFlow is a simple no-code to low-code chatbot builder where you can build AI chatbots with a simple drag and drop interface as you can see here on the screen. Now, just real quick to show you guys that I know what I'm talking about. If you go to the VoiceFlow experts page and you scroll down, you will see that Omnifusion AI, which is the YouTube channel you're watching right now, is actually listed here as a certified expert. So I will guide you through this in an expert manner. And by the end of this video, you will know everything you need to know. Now, once you've signed up to VoiceFlow, you're gonna land in this master dashboard and we're going to go ahead and create a new agent so that I can walk you through all the knowledge base options. I'm just going to name the agent knowledge base. We're going to select the chat modality. You also have the voice option with voice flow and we're going to select the language, which in this case is going to be English. You then just go ahead and click on create agent and it's going to open up this canvas right here. Now, I'm not going to walk you through building an entire chatbot, but we have a ton of playlists on this channel, which you can watch and I'm going to link them up here, including on how to connect voice flow with Instagram DMs, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp and more as well as building customer AI support chatbots and a lot of other cool projects. Now in this video specifically, I'm going to be talking about what kind of files can you add into a knowledge base and how can you allow your chatbot to access those files. So what I'm going to do in this canvas is delete everything right here. As I said, we have a free community school.com slash Omnifusion where you can find all our templates and past tutorial videos as well. Now, before we go over the files that you can add into your knowledge base, we're going to go over how you can access the knowledge base inside of the VoiceFlow canvas. If you go to AI, we have two different cards. We have the response AI card and we have the set AI card. These are the two blocks where you can use AI to retrieve information from your knowledge base and provide an answer to the user. The difference between these two are with the response AI card, you're going to send the message into the chat and you're actually going to display the output of this card to the user. And with a set AI card, you can use your knowledge base as a data source and actually save that information into a variable and then continue doing with that variable as you wish. For example, adding another AI step onto that to check the information etc. Now the important key when using a response AI card is that you adjust this specific data source from AI model to knowledge base. Now if you keep it as AI model, it's just going to use generic knowledge. So if we at the prompt respond to the message and we have the AI model as a card, now all we need to do is add in a capture card, which is going to capture whatever I'm or the user is typing. And we're then going to respond to that message, which is going to be the last utterance. So we need to provide that variable as well as so that it can respond to it. Now we're just going to click on run and we're gonna ask when was the Eiffel, not sure if you spell it like that, probably not, uh, built. And it's going to say it was built between 1887 and 1889. So that is a general response. However, now let's say this is a chatbot for an e-commerce store. And I ask, how much does the dog bed cost? It's not going to know the answer. It's just going to take something from its general knowledge. And it's going to say the cost of the dog bed depends on various factors. Da, da, da. Now, if we want to switch this to a knowledge base, which we're going to do in a second, we're going to use the data source knowledge base. So we're going to do the question. And in this case, it's a little bit different. So for the question, you just add in the variable, which is going to be last utterance. That's the question from the user and the instructions respond to the message. Now you can also set a not found path, which means the AI will not respond if an answer is not found. Now, for example, in this case, you could go down to a text and just say, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Please email us at whatever email you want to email them at, or you can just disable the not found path. And it's always going to respond to the question, even if there is 
no answer found in the knowledge base. Now that is something totally up to you. And that's something I go over more in depth in the AI customer support video. Now, in this case, I'm going to keep the not found path and go down to this text. And if after we answer the message, we're just going to loop it back to the capture card so that we can keep on chatting with this. Now for the set AI card, the same principle applies. The only difference is that you save the output into a variable. So I'm going to delete this for now for demonstration purposes. So what we're going to do now is go over the different knowledge base options you have for adding information into your AI chatbot. For this, you're just going to click on back in the top left and you're going to navigate to the knowledge section over here. Now in this knowledge section, you can add data sources to build the knowledge base material. So we have the option to add data sources, which can be plain text, in which case you would just add an information right here. You can upload files, which can be a text file, docx file, etc., a PDF, max file size 10 megabytes. So make sure that you don't go over that file size. You can add in URLs. So let's say you just have website FAQ pages. You can add that in there and it's going to pull the information from there. You can add a sitemap or you can do an integration such as Zendesk. For example, if you're building a big customer support agent and the company that you're building it for already has a Zendesk help desk, you can take all of the information from there and add it into the knowledge base through this integration. For the simplicity of this video, I'm just going to add in a plain text and we're going to keep going with the dog bed question. So we're going to do question. How much does a dog bed cost? And the answer is going to be a dog bed. We're actually going to split up prices. A small dog bed costs $1.15 and a large one costs $1.25. We're going to import this and now it's going to add the data source in here. Now, obviously, the more you add, if you're building out a proper project, you're going to have to add in a lot of information to the knowledge base. But for the demonstration purpose, this is going to be fine. Something else that's important to note when you're using a knowledge base with voice flow is that up here, if you click on the settings icon, you have your knowledge base settings, which is going to determine the output. So over here, you control your system prompt, uh, which in this case, by default, is just an FAQ chat assistant. But in this case, we're going to say you are the customer support agent for an online store selling pet items. Respond to the user's question. And in this case, the prompt is very simple, but you would have to go in more into depth if you're actually building this out for a client. The chunk limit is going to determine how many chunks of the knowledge base you pass along to the AI system. So you can think of your knowledge base. If it's a lot of documents, it's going to be split up into smaller chunks. And how many of these smaller chunks do you want to return? If you do one, it might not return all of the information. I found a sweet spot is between two and four. In this case right here, we can just do one because we literally only have one chunk in here. The max tokens as well is going to determine how many tokens you can use maximum for your output. The issue is if you keep it low, it's not going to force the AI to write a shorter message. It's just going to cut off the message after a certain point. So I just like to max it out to be fair. And temperature determines how deterministic or how random the output is. So for a customer support agent, we're going to want to keep it low since we don't want any random outputs. So we're going to put it at 0.05. The AI model, in most cases, you're going to want to go for GPT-4 Omni uh, by OmniFusion and then go ahead and use this. It's going to be the best option for you. So we're just going to go ahead and save that. And now we're going to return back. We're going to click on workflows and click on start. And it's going to bring us back to this page. So walk you through one more time. We're capturing a user reply. And then we use the knowledge base as a data source. And we're going to respond to the question. And we have a not found path if we don't find the answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it. I'm going to say, how much does a dog bed cost? Previously, it couldn't give us an answer, but now we have a knowledge base set up with the exact answer to that question. So it's going to respond, a small dog bed costs $15 and a large one costs 25. Now, since we've looped it back, we can ask another question. And now I'm going to demonstrate the not found path and how this works if you don't find an answer in the knowledge base. How many colors do you have for the dog colors? <laughs> in this case, it went down the not found path and it wasn't able to answer the question and gave the email. Now, obviously, if you're building out a customer support chatbot, you could integrate this into any ticketing system, open a ticket on their behalf or whatever the case may be. Now, as you can see, this ended the session right here. So in this case, if we want to allow them to keep asking questions, we can just link it back up. Now, to demonstrate this one more time, I'm going to go back into the knowledge. I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a data source with plain text. I'm going to say, how many colors do you have for the dog colors? And then just say, we offer five different colors, blue, red, green, purple, pink. We're going to import this. We're going to wait for the status. And now it's been successfully added. We're going to go back to workflows. We're going to go back to start. Now we're going to ask the same exact question. Now that we have the information in the knowledge base, how many colors do you have for the dog collars. And this time it's not gonna go down the not found path because we do have the answer and it's gonna say we offer five different colors. Now you can see that it's not a very in-depth answer and that's something you would control by specifying the instructions that you wanna be as specific as possible as well as going back over here into the knowledge base and working on this prompt. As you can see, having a knowledge base can make or break an AI chatbot. It's basically impossible to build an AI chatbot without a knowledge base and using VoiceFlow to do so is very, very easy and convenient, especially the not found path is gonna 
save you a lot of headaches because AI models do tend to make up information if you don't have a not found path. It's just going to make up some random price for something. And that's something that you definitely don't want. As I said before, if you guys want to learn how to integrate voiceful chatbots into any social media platform, we have a playlist. I'm going to link it right over here. And we have a ton of other videos where I go through in-depth chatbot builds inside of VoiceFlow, including AI appointment setters and customer support bots. You can find all of that in our free school community at school.com slash Omnifusion. If you guys found value from this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.